Welcome back to another episode of Plant-Based Ads. I'm Joey. We are a mostly whole food, plant-based cooking channel. We do some product reviews. Sometimes there's some uh, DIY stuff because I like to do things myself. And occasionally we have some episodes with Tim. If you like what you hear so far, please hit that like button. Show us some love. And please think about subscribing and becoming part of the Plant-Based Ads family. If you've been watching me lately, you know that I'm doing the Starch Solution. The Starch Solution is a way of eating uh, high carb, low fat, all whole foods, uh, and you get your health back and you lose weight. I absolutely love it. I'm now down 35 pounds. I'm lower than I've ever weighed as, you know, in the last 10 years. It, it's, it's, it's so exciting and so frustrating at the same time because, you know, it's amazing that I'm I'm lower than I've weighed in 10 years, but it's also frustrating that I've spent 10 years trying to get to this point and lost that much of my life dealing with this crazy stuff. The Starch Solution has really allowed me to get all that back, so I'm absolutely enjoying it. If you're on the Starch Solution and you're looking for a place to go where you can get support by like-minded people, people who are sharing photos, people who are doing challenges together, then that's our Facebook group, Plant-Based Ads, Starch Solution Enthusiasts. It's a group of about 6,000, 7,000 people now. It's not even a year old. And, uh, you know, we're doing all of that. We're cheering each other on. We're, we're having challenges every month. Uh, we're... You know, we're sharing photos, recipes, so you always have ideas of what to eat because you're seeing what other, peop what other people are, are, are making, right? They're showing you, and you're like, oh, okay, I haven't had that in a long time. I could totally make that. So it really brings you some opportunities that you may not have thought of. Our channel does have a Patreon page set up. If you're interested in supporting us and joining the team, we would love to have you. We could really use your help. It does take a lot of effort to do these weekly videos and film the, the cooking and all that stuff and try and get them out to you in a timely manner uh, You know, to make sure that you're able to see some of the things that we're doing and what's working and what's not. Uh, a lot of work goes into it. So if you are interested in supporting us with Patreon, we would love to have you. There'll be a link below the video that tells you how you can go ahead and come on board and be a monthly supporter. All right, so today's video is kind of interesting. In the group, we're starting today a nine-day Mary's Mini Challenge. Uh, Mary's Mini is a video I did a while ago. It's where you pick one starch, one simple starch, uh, potatoes or rice or, or corn like polenta or oats or whatever, and you pair, you keep that one starch for the 10 days. We're going to do it for nine because there's nine days left of the month. And then you pair it with simple green vegetables, salad, broccoli, and you omit like the beans, you omit the bread, you omit the sauces, you just omit everything. Um, and you just pare it down to a simple starch and a simple non-starchy vegetable. And you do that for 10 days and it kind of makes food boring. You're not looking forward to it. You're not recipe cooking. And by doing that, you don't overeat and you wind up losing weight. So it's worked for me. I did, this is my second one. I'm about to show you what I ate on a potato Mary's mini, and that was my second one, and it's really helped my scale move after months of not moving at all. Uh, it's really taught me to make food a lot more simpler most days of the week. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you a week of potatoes for the Mary's mini. You can use this on Star Solution, you can use it for whatever you want, but this is what I did for my Mary's mini week of potatoes. It was like a seven day uh, Mary's mini we did last month. First, I started off with breakfast. The very first day, I made breakfast for that one day. As you'll see after this, I made it for the week. But here, I'm just having some hash browns, some uh, Brussels sprouts that I threw in the air fryer, and a little bit of ketchup. The hash browns right here are just the sprouts hash browns. It's this bag right here. And all they have in it, the only ingredient is uh, potatoes. So there's nothing in that bag but shredded potatoes. And you can shred your own potatoes too. And the same thing with the, with the Brussels sprouts. That's just refrigerated fresh Brussels sprouts from Costco that I got. I got a whole bag of them. And I wound up, you know, making some for that meal and some for the other meal. I just threw them in the air fryer and let them char because I like them charred and threw them on a plate. So my first breakfast for the first day was simple uh, hash browns cooked in the skillet and some Brussels sprouts. For day two, I realized that I, I wanted hash browns again. 
uh, cause it's a good breakfast food, but I wanted to make enough for a few days. And I also wanted more than just the potatoes in it. So you can see right here, I'm using the same hash browns, but I'm also using a bag of frozen bell peppers and onions from Trader Joe's. So I'm just opening these bags and, you know, tossing them together and cooking them. So right here, I'm laying out the hash browns. Uh, I opened the bag and threw it out there. And then I'm laying out the, the, the peppers and the onions. They're frozen, right? I let them thaw for a while. And then I just want to squeeze the water out of them. A lot of people don't do this on frozen. They do this on fresh, but I do it on frozen also. I mean, you can see right here, look at all that water that's coming out of that. That's going to not brown my food if that water's in there. So. I'm pulling all that water out and trying to get it to a point where I can cook, because I'm not using oil to cook, right? So I want my food to cook. You can see here that it's all squeezed out and now it's basically just the thawed out potatoes and the, uh, the, the veggies. So I'm gonna toss them all in a bowl here by using my rag so I don't spill any of it. And now I'm just gonna add some spices. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt here, not too much. And then I'm gonna do some fresh ground pepper cracked over this because I, I love pepper on potatoes. And next I'm gonna throw in some sriracha because I mean, what's potatoes without sriracha, right? And I'm just gonna start mixing all this up in the bowl, trying to get it combined so, you know, it's ready to cook. You can see here, I'm just using a bowl and a fork and nothing fancy, that's it. This is gonna be everything that's holding my mixture together, right? Uh, to make some type of patties that I'm gonna make uh, for hash browns. So next I've got up my electric grill. I just pulled this thing out and plug it in. I usually use this for pancakes, but I'm gonna use it for the hash browns too, because I'm not cooking them with oil, so I need something nonstick. And I plugged it in and let it get hot. And when it was hot, I just dribbled in a little bit of water on it. You can see here, the water is hitting the grill and just kind of, you know, splattering here. The grill, the grill is hot and ready to go. My first attempt at this, I just laid these hash browns out, right? I wasn't trying to make patties or anything. I thought I'm just gonna cook all these hash browns and throw them in a bowl. So that was one option I did here. And you can see here, I did this kind of browning and then I'm flipping them with the spatula. And you can flip them once, you can flip them a few times. I get impatient, so I probably flip them too soon. And then I'm like, okay, well, they're not brown enough. So then I'll let them cook and flip them again. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. And I'm just kind of flipping them until I get the brownness I want. I would leave them on for a few minutes so the one side gets charred before I flip them if I had to do it again next time. Um, but I'm always so impatient, I just can't wait. So here I am just like still flipping them around as I cook them. You can see they're looking really good. They're just browned hash browns and, and peppers. They're not sticking. The grill's doing the job. This came out really, really nice. Now I'm just kind of scooping them up and throwing in the bowl. And I planned to just doing a whole bowl of these, right? Where I would just have them all scooped up. And that's kind of what I did with most of it. Then after that, I decided, well, what if I just make them in ready to serve patties, right? This is a lot harder because there's nothing holding these together, right? There's no egg, there's no oil, there's nothing in it to keep them together, but I still wanted to try it anyway. So here I am, I've got them all nicely, you know, laid out on my grill, There's six nice little patties right here. And I'm using my spatula to kind of just push them down and, and get the, the surface of them to cook. And then I start flipping them and they're actually, they're turning out okay as I flip them. I mean, they're not beautiful because some of them are falling apart, but I mean, you can kind of see they're, they're actually six little patties as I flip them and they are browning nicely. So this is definitely an option if this is what you want to do. I mean, really, in the end, when I went to eat these every day, I spooned them out because, you know, the patties didn't really work for me. They weren't like a serving size. They ate like three of them, right? So, but if, if you're one of those people who actually, that's who I am, where it likes everything in uniform size, this should work for you too. You can see here, I'm just scraping them off the uh, grill. And they're, again, they're not sticking. I'm not using oil on this, right? I just used the water and that was it. And I mean, there's a little bit of kind of work to make sure you get it all off. I probably could have used better tools on this. And here I start getting smarter about it and grabbing a second spatula, right? So I have, you know, some force on the other side of the spatula. You can see I've got a nice little plate set up with four of them, you know, just for like an Instagram photo with some ketchup in it. This made an amazing meal and this lasted me a few days. This is what I ate for breakfast like three or four days that week. I really enjoy this and I think you will too if you give it a try. The other great thing about just making a bowl of them without being in patty shape is that you can package this to go if you're going to take it with you to work. I've got a nice little glass container here that I use. I'll put a link to that below the video so you can buy the same one. And when I show you the cover on how this works, you'll really like it. I just fill one side of it up. You can fill both sides of it up. It's kind of meant to have one, like a little starch and a veggie. You, since you've got both in here, you can do that. And I'm just taking a uh, I pretend I don't eat ketchup, but I'm pretending to use ketchup because Tim eats the ketchup, not me. And 
Um, I'm showing you that that little plastic cover has a little rubber seal on it. So if you throw your ketchup on the one side and you push that down, that rubber seal stops the ketchup from spilling into the other side. If it's like me, you're one of those people who doesn't like your food crossing back and forth. It's a great little device and it really does the job as far as, you know, making your food ready to go. For the rest of the week, after I ran out of that, I made the hash brown and broccoli bake. Now this does have a cheese sauce. I'm using my cauliflower cheese sauce in this. Uh, there's a recipe video for that right here. And there's also a video for the hash brown bake right here also. Yeah. This hash brown bake I made with the cauliflower cheese sauce, but when I did the cauliflower cheese sauce, I left out the tahini and I left out the milk. So it was just kind of water and the spices and the cauliflower, and I did leave the oats in. I realize oats is a second starch on Mary's Mini, um, but I feel like it's fine because uh, the idea of not switching the starches on Mary's Mini is so you don't get excited about eating a new starch and you overeat. With this sauce, we're not gonna be overeating. It's just, you know, the sauce is just to accent the potato. So, you know, in that way, I guess it violates Mary's Mini because I'm using oats in it, but at the same time, oats is allowed on Mary's Mini. So I, as far as I'm concerned, it's okay as an accent. And it really made this dish work, right, for the potatoes and the broccoli. Otherwise, you're just eating some potatoes and some broccoli with nothing on it. The sauce kind of ties it all together. So that really incorporated breakfast for me. Those three things got me through the week, and you know, I could have come up with other ideas, but that was really all I needed to get through. That broccoli bake made like four breakfasts for me and four for Tim. Um, so there was, there was a lot of it. The same thing with the hash brown. There was a lot of hash browns, right? So that gave me everything I needed to get through at least seven days. I probably could have went nine or 10 days with those items. So a full week of potatoes for breakfast. Now let me tell you about lunches and dinners. These are the meals I made for lunches and dinners, and I interchanged them back and forth. One of my favorite lunches was the uh, mayonnaise list potato salad. I did a video for that right here. This salad is loosely based off a German potato salad where you have, uh, you know, vinegar dressing uh, instead of the, the mayonnaise. So obviously I couldn't use mayonnaise. So that dressing in that salad recipe uh, is amazing and it's just uh, vinegar based. You can see right here, this is an amazing salad. It's chunky, it's, the potatoes look fantastic. It's got like scallions in it. It's got all sorts of stuff in it and it is absolutely delicious. So this was the first thing I made for lunches for the week. After that, I took some potatoes and uh, cooked them in the air fryer. You can see right here and I'm gonna tell you why. I had my air fryer potatoes uh, cut up into chunks and I just threw them in the bag. You see the bag behind it and I've got potatoes for the week now Not for hash browns or for dinners, but just for things I might need potatoes for To just kind of throw together sometimes I just need potatoes during the week because I get a whim I'm like oh, I'm gonna make something and I just need some sliced potatoes and I want to go through the whole process of cooking them Right, so right here is one of the things I'm talking about. I took this bag of stir-fried vegetables from, from uh, Kroger, we call it fries here. And I threw it in the frying pan and started heating it up. And then I've got my potatoes, I threw them in there, right? And I've got some soy sauce, I threw that in there. I'm actually using tamari here. And I used water to cook these, I didn't use oil. And I'm having myself a little potato vegetable stir fry. I mean, check that out, it looks absolutely amazing, right? That was a full meal, it was a Mary's Mini compatible meal. And it was absolutely delicious. I mean, you can see here, guys, that plate of food looks amazing. I dug into that. It was delish. Another lunch that I really enjoyed having, I'm going to show you later on that I had mashed potatoes for dinner. My leftover potatoes got turned into these beautiful, uh, crusted mashed potato balls that I cooked in the air fryer. Personally, I love them just the way they were. Tim says they were overcooked, so you might want to cook them a lot less time in the air fryer. There's no video for this. I haven't made a video for this yet. I probably will at some point, but I'll put a... Um, a recipe below uh, in the video description so you can make these too. What I did here was I just took a bowl and threw some seasonings in. You can see the bowl here with all the seasonings. I started with this uh, no salt seasoning from Costco, just a saltless seasoning, and then some nutritional yeast, right? And I just kind of mixed all that together and made a little like coating for it. And then as I took these uh, mashed potato balls, I used a, a melon baller and made a little mashed potato ball and then kind of rolled it around my hands to get it flat and then just pop popped it into the the coating and then put it on the uh, cutting board there. And then I'm just doing it again. You can see here, they got a, a it doesn't have to be perfectly round, but got a nice little mata mashed potato ball, just rolling it around in that bowl in the uh, coating, right? You can see here, right? It's like not heavily coated, but enough to give it some color, right? And then just laying it down. Here, they're all ready to go in the air fryer. So 
you know, I'm ready to cook these. And you can see here I'm serving it with a salad too because I wanted to have some greens, right? That wasn't my whole meal. And, they, and I've got some onions cooking for the salad because I'm going to have uh, some sauteed onions on the salad, right? I mean, go big or go home, right? And in the end, I just served these crusted potato balls with some marinara. It's my uh, marinara sauce. I have a recipe link for that right here. You can check that out. And here you can see inside one of the mashed potato balls, they're soft on the inside, even though they're crusty on the outside. Again, Tim says they were overcooked. I thought they were perfect. So you guys can decide. All right, next I have a new version of my oven brown uh, steak fries. I cook russet potatoes in the Instapot, right? I don't really like potatoes in the Instapot if I'm gonna eat them right out of there because I feel like they don't really caramelize or get, you know, get uh, cooked well. I mean, they get cooked through, but they don't have that kind of, you know, oven taste, right? So I normally don't eat potatoes out of the Instapot, but if I'm gonna make fries out of them, I cook them in the Instapot first, right? So they're fully cooked. And then you have to let them cool because you can't cut hot potatoes, they'll just fall apart. So cook your potatoes in the Instapot and then let them cool. And the next day or whenever, you take them out and you can see here that I've started just cutting them into little steak fry shapes, right? You can see there's still a potato there I haven't cut and the other ones have kind of all been cut already. So, you know, that's what they should look like. I'm using this uh, spice right here. I'm gonna put a link to it right below in the video description. It's made for roasted vegetables and fries. It is delicious. And then I'm throwing the potatoes in a bowl and I'm just throwing a bunch of the seasoning in there and mixing it all up with my hand. Um, and that's kind of what it should look like. It was a really simple process. Now I'm laying them out on a pan that has like a grill on it so the air gets around it. I've got it in the convection oven. I'm going to cook these in the oven on broil for like five minutes. Then I'm going to flip them and then I'm going to cook them five minutes again. And that's all that's involved. Since they're already cooked, we're just coloring them. And you can see here, I've got a beautiful plate of uh, oven brown fries. I absolutely love these things, right? And that's the sauce, that's the cheese sauce I was talking about earlier for the breakfast bake. I, you know, I cut up like probably six or seven potatoes to do this and I ate them all in one shot. I was kind of embarrassed at the end because I was like, I just ate like six baked potatoes because that's what they were, right? I mean, they were smaller. And I was like, holy smoke, what's wrong with me, right? And I didn't weigh myself the next day because I was like, I, you know, I'm not a glutton for punishment. But I weighed myself two days later and my weight was down. So the whole th thing about carbs making you gain weight, like that is just not true. So this plan works and this right here is a good example of it. Guys, I love this recipe. I love that seasoning. I love oven brown fries. It was amazing. You should definitely make these. And then another lunch or dinner that I had was mashed potatoes. And I'll put a, uh, a recipe uh, below the video in the description. If you make these, you gotta make them without the plant milk. For these, I made them with just the water from when I boiled the potatoes. I saved some of that water and added that as my liquid. Was it as good as having potatoes with plant milk in it? No, it was not, right? I mean, that's the way it is. But it still allowed me to have the potatoes. And then you just throw some salt and pepper or garlic salt on it, whatever. And to me, that's fine, right? Again, there's a link below the video in the video description for the, the mashed potato recipe. I'll show it in there without the milk. And then the last uh, lunch and dinner that I made was uh, Hasselback potatoes. Hasselback potatoes are potatoes that are, when you cook them, you slice them, right? Uh, and you, you put like a garlic sauce on top and it seeps in and then you, you bake that whole thing and you kind of get this garlicky taste throughout the potato. And I just minced up some garlic and kind of laid it on top and, and stuffed it in the sides. Be careful because it can be really garlicky, like, like too garlicky to eat. So I would go light on the garlic and I just served it with some uh, broccoli and you know, it was fine. I absolutely enjoyed that. I only had that for one meal and I felt like I wasn't really interested in having that again. Uh, not one that's mashed potatoes, right? So, uh, so that was kind of a, a one-time thing. All right, so you, you can see that, you know, none of these recipes were, you know, over the top or took a lot of work or involved a lot of planning, right? And that's kind of the whole idea of Mary's Mini is to, you know, have your meals, but not put a lot of production time into it. Because the more complicated you make meals, the more you tend to overeat, right? The more variety you have, the more you tend to overeat. So you want simple and you just want it to be something that's going to fill you up and not something you're like, I can't wait to have this tomorrow and then that on Thursday. Because when you look forward to food and you look forward to meals, you tend to overeat and overindulge. The good thing about Mary's Mini is we do a challenge at the end of every month 
like we were saying earlier, in our Facebook group. Today's the 22nd of March. So we're going to be going from today through the end of the month. That's nine days. And the way this works is the first uh, Monday of every month starts our Start Solution 21-Day Challenge. And whenever that ends, in this case, the first Monday of the month was March 1st, that ended yesterday, the 21st of March. So now on the 22nd of March, we have the rest of the month with nothing going on because we don't start our next challenge until April something, right? So we have nine days at the end of this month. We're just going to do a nine-day Merry Mini. Here's some ideas for you. If you're doing a potato mini, check this out. If you're doing a rice mini, I did a video a while ago on, about what I eat on uh, Mary's Mini, and that was all rice meals, so that was really good. Check that out. All right, guys, I hope you got some ideas out of this. Uh, I hope it brought you some value. I hope you've got you know, some encouragement now, some inspiration to get out there and make some meals for the Merry Mini, and I hope that you're doing this with us in the Facebook group. Please hit that like button, show us some love, so YouTube will suggest our videos to other people. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Become part of the Plant-Based Ads family. You'll get notified every time we have a new video, usually every Monday. If there's a DIY video, that's gonna be on Wednesdays, and if there's anything with Tim, like baking with Tim, uh, fermenting with Tim, pickling with Tim, any of that stuff, that'll be on Saturdays. And please, leave a comment. Let me know if you're doing Mary's Mini. Have you heard of Mary's Mini? Are you looking forward to Mary's Mini? Are you in the group and, and doing Mary's Mini with me? Are you doing the Starch Solution with me? You know I'm much stronger when I'm doing this with other people. Uh, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm down to my lowest weight, so I'm really excited. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.